What's going on? In my last Kamuko video, you saw me make this. And then last night, I spent some time and made this. It took me about two hours to cut out all those infill pieces. So I'd like to expand on that a little bit. Let me show you what I'm working on today. There's the Asano Ha pattern. And here's the two other grids I made. I'd like to make like a, uh, a longer panel, but all connected. See, these are connect, uh, disconnected. I would like to make one that's all connected. So I've got nine leftover pieces from the last time I cut all of these. So I, I want to make some long pieces to connect all these together. I want to put an Asano Ha pattern in the middle. And then I'd like to try this hashtag pattern on the two sides. So it'll be Asano Ha, hashtag, hashtag. So I want to try that. In the previous video, I had the sled that I made just attached to my miter gauge. Since then, I've taken the time to go ahead and add some runners. That'll give, make it more precise. There was a little bit of wiggle with the fence attached to the miter gauge. And now there's no play at all in it. So I feel better about the cuts being more precise. I've got this other piece of poplar here. So I'm going to go ahead and make the series of curves I need so that I can use those extra pieces from last time and make one long panel consisting of three different patterns. Everything I'm doing here I learned from the book that Matt Kinney wrote. I mentioned it last time, but just in case you haven't seen it, it's called The Art of Kumiko. It's available on his website or on Amazon, I guess. I'll put a link in the description box if you want to check it out. So what's next is, I've got to cut this piece off, and then I've got to cut the pieces for the hashtags. So I need to cut this off, reset the height to cut the curves for the hashtag pieces, and then cut those. All right, I had to make a, another auxiliary fence with a little pin closer to the blade uh, for the specific purpose of making the hashtag. So it is what it is. I had to do that in between this shot and the last shot. So I went ahead and did it real quick. I'm about a half a sixteenth inch too close to the blade, but I'm just going to roll with it. I think it's going to be fine. So let me go ahead and cut these hashtag curves. For these small pieces here, I've made this push block. It's just two pieces of poplar that, that have been laminated together. And there's a section here that I can take this piece and put it right there. And that'll push through the blade one at a time and cut the little pieces that I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I think I've got the blade set up like it needs to be from the fence to where it'll fit in the curve. Uh, I really won't know exactly until I make a couple of cuts and see how it comes out. All right, that's not going to work. Uh, I tried a couple of test cuts just on a blank piece to make sure that it's thick enough to fit in the kerf. So the piece is just falling in there. And then after it gets cut by the blade, it's getting destroyed. So it just broke this piece off. So I'm going to have to probably cut these pieces with my sled and just set up a, uh, set up a stop block or something. So let me get this one cut. I can at least get this cut while I'm here, and then I can go back to the sled. Before I move the fence, I went ahead and started cutting some pieces for infill. But I got a lot of burning. That's how bad that is. There's no way to not see that when I put it together. So uh, something I will have to do later on is make a thicknessing jig for my plane so that I can set these in a jig and cut them a little thick and then plane them down by, by hand. That'll clean up the surfaces. So that'll be something I'll do later on. All right, I still haven't cut these pieces out. It's kind of late, it's getting late. I don't think I'm gonna have time tonight, but I can go ahead and put the grid work together. I don't know what that's called. I think there's a Japanese name for what the grid's called. I'm not sure what that is. But we go ahead and put some glue and then work on this. I'll get back to you.
All right, I didn't do any more last night. Um, I've been thinking about it. And I decided to forego using the sled on my table saw because it's all the burning and stuff on the pieces. I didn't want to burn these any uh, worse than those other ones were. So I decided to use the bandsaw. So what I did was I just set up a, it's got a piece of hardboard here just so it could catch the piece so that it doesn't fall in the hole behind the blade. And I just took the same push stick I made for the table saw. I've just got this here and this here to stop the hardboard from moving. So what I'm doing is I'm just placing this piece here and then going through the blade and making cuts. And uh, I've done several tests and I've got it about as good as I can get it. And I'm going to go ahead and batch these out. So here we go. The bandsaw is leaving some fuzzies on the bottom. So what I'm doing is I got a piece of sandpaper. I'll just rub that real quick and then I'll get rid of that. All right, here we go. All right, this is more than what I need for this. This is what I'm going to use them for. They're going to go there, 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 and there, there. So what I need to do next is cut some diagonal pieces. Then once I get those diagonal pieces put in there, then I'll cut the pieces I need for this one, which will go right in the middle. It doesn't snow very often here, but today it just happens to be. I got these from Mayer Woodworks, or Meyer Woodworks, however it's pronounced. You can purchase them from Amazon or from a store. I'll put a link to both in the description, but I'll set it up in my vise like that. So here you see what I'm trying to do. Got that first piece cut. It's going to lock it there and there. Obviously. <laughs> That square's got to be in the center. So I made this thing way too long. They're too long right now. So I'm going to go work on these and shorten these down to like conventionally fit both of them in. And it will hold that piece in the center. And then I'll try cutting these two to about the same size. Once I've got the size locked in on the jig, then I just all I got to do is just batch them out. You know, there won't be much adjusting after that. Let me go ahead and work on this and I'll come back to you when I have these fitting to show you what it looks like. Okay, I think I'm getting somewhere here. Got the first piece in. There we go. So let me try to cut two other pieces this exact same length and see if they'll match up on these two corners. I hope they do. All right, I'm back. Let's try it out. Uh, a little loose right there. Like a glove, man. It's tied like a glove. It looks like that length is going to work. So I need to cut <laughs> 28 more pieces like this. And then I'll be able to finish the hashtag pattern. And then move on to the Asano Ha pattern. This is so cool, right? That is so neat. So now I gotta do a Sano Ha pattern, which is gonna go right in the middle. Now each one of these squares here consists of a diagonal piece, four hinge pieces, one, two, three, four, and two locking pieces, one and two. Okay, here are the diagonal pieces. It needs just a tad bit of persuasion. Now I gotta make the hinge pieces which are these. And here are the last of the hinge pieces. And then the last locking piece. Well, there you go. It's pretty cool. I think it came out pretty good. I mean, there's a few gaps here and there, but 
I'm going to go ahead and take all the parts back out and glue them back in, and then I'll sand. Uh, use it like a flat sanding beam or something on both sides just to smooth them out and possibly fill in some of those gaps with some glue and stuff like that. I mean, I doubt you can even see any gaps if I'm just holding it here, but if you get a little bit closer, you can see that I'm a beginner for sure. So anyway, like I said, I learned how to do the Asano Ha pattern, which I just did an overview of in this video. I learned that from Matt Kinney in his book. So go ahead and check this out. Or there's a bunch of other YouTubers who have already made videos on how to do that pattern, which is why I didn't go too much into detail on that. They've already done all that. I didn't want to just do the same thing over again. So anyway, um, I appreciate you watching. I'll put links to a few of those other videos that I watched also on YouTube on how to make the Asano Ha pattern. The jigs, you can get these from Mayer Woodworks or Mayer Woodworks. Uh, links to his stuff in the description. And I think that's going to do it. This is only the second thing I've made, all right? So I've got a lot of practice. Uh, took quite a while. I mean, I built this in two days, really. Built the frame last night, and I did all of the infill pieces today. So it's taken a few hours. I can see where I can improve and how precise I am. <laughs> and there's just a lot of things I need to practice on. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.